tonight on DC News Now at 9. About of road rage shootings across Virginia causing concern. Ahead, we hear from a survivor as we look at what's behind the trend. An unlikely hero saves a family from a house fire. She saved our lives because without her, the baby would be dead. I would be dead. Coming up, we speak with the Maryland couple whose dog's teen senses signaled something was wrong. Could White's Ferry be reopening? The owners of the historic crossing throwing a new offer on the table. We break it down. I'm tracking some rain showers moving back into the region for your midweek. I have the details. They're coming up. Plus, President Biden sits down for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview. What he's saying about the state of the economy, winning back voters ahead of November, and his Republican challenger, Donald Trump. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight for DC News Now at 9 o'clock. I'm Chris Flanagan in Montgomery County, an unexpected hero credited with saving the lives of two people after a fire broke out at a home in Rockville. It happened yesterday afternoon on Green Pasture Drive. That's where we find our Mario Carbone joining us live tonight. And Marielle, the homeowners tell you they never expected to be in this situation. No, Chris, they didn't. You can see the aftermath of that fire here. The boarded up corner of this home is where smoke was billowing out yesterday, but it wasn't a smoke detector or even the fire department that alerted them of this fire. It was a pet, a four legged member of the family named Molly. Are you the best girl that saved mommy's life? Quiet and content today. Eight year old yellow lab Molly is humble. Are you the best girl? The furry member of the Miller family now hailed as a hero. I mean, she's a wonderful dog. I never thought I'd be in this situation. Diane Miller says she was upstairs Monday holding her 14 month old granddaughter while she napped when she heard a pounding on the nursery door. Molly started hitting the door with her paw and hitting it and hitting it. Miller opened the door and that's when she smelled the smoke. And the smoke was pouring out of the floor. I put her collar on and she was pulling us out. Miller called 911. These photos from the Montgomery County Fire Department show the scene. Smoke coming out of the side of the house where Miller believes an electrical box could be to blame. Despite the smoke, smoke detectors did not go off. Just Molly. I love her so much and she saved our lives because without her, the baby would be dead. I would be dead. It's a miracle that they got out. Charles Miller says um, he's still processing what happened. And though there's damage, all that stuff is ruined. He says the irreplaceable things are okay. The baby, my wife, our kids, and I'm the last. And Molly's probably first or second or third. You're the best girl. Now, as a puppy, Molly was actually training to be a guide dog for the blind, but she flunked out of that program, eventually ending up with the Miller family. And Chris, it's safe to say that she still found a way to help people saving this family here in Rockville. Reporting live in Rockville tonight, I'm Arielle Carbone, DC News Now. Yeah, Molly is so sweet. Molly to the rescue. Marielle, thanks. Great story there. Meanwhile, in their season finale, the Washington Capitals, they are playing for the playoffs tonight in Philly. So with a win, they're guaranteed a spot in the postseason as a wild card team. Right now, the Caps are tied with the Flyers. 1-1, third period just getting underway. Our sports team will have highlights at 1045 over on DCW 50 and live reaction from Philly tonight on game night at 11 o'clock. Let's go Caps. Get a win tonight. All right, Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb here. Certainly does not feel like hockey weather. Kind of mild out there once again. Yeah, I just went out with uh, no coat uh, yet again across the DMV. We do have mild conditions pumping in from the south. Southerly flow taking over the region. And we're sitting under a partly cloudy sky. So there's a few clouds that are forming in from west to east. But you can see uh, winds very light, variable at times. 5 to 10 miles per hour.
hour at most and really will have a rinse repeat cycle temperature wise for tomorrow. Unfortunately, we do have an approaching storm system and so that's going to allow for rain to reappear across our region right now. Mostly cloudy skies. The farther you go into northern Virginia, it's very dry out there and so really seeing a dew points not too bad either. Open up the window, get that good breeze in full effect. Here's that high pressure. It's pushing out towards the Atlantic. You have that warm front and there's that next storm system out towards Chicago, allowing for a tornado watch to currently be in place. A few raindrops for Luray into Woodstock, but all of us sitting under pretty dry weather under this satellite composite radar. And so no big concerns. Uh, starting off your morning, nine o'clock is where we'll start to kind of transition with that storm system, bringing increase in clouds. And then really throughout the morning, we deal with rain showers along with a few storms throughout your afternoon. I'll have that full breakdown and the timing, Chris, coming up. Okay, Thanks. We'll see you then in Montgomery County. A man now in custody after police say he lured a child into the woods and raped them. Charles Irby Jr. is charged with that crime. Now we're sharing his photo here. His detectives are concerned more victims may be out there. A sexual assault was reported Wednesday in Rockville. Police say Irby Jr. sexually assaulted the child in behind Veers Mill Road and Aspen Hill Road. A suspect was then taken into custody on Friday. He is currently being held without bond. We have an update tonight out of Prince George's County. Police will investigate last night's shooting involving a Forest Heights officer. That officer shot an assault suspect at a shopping center in Oxon Hill. According to the investigation, the officer opened fire because he believed the suspect was moving towards police with a knife. Police later recovered this tool you can see here on the right side of your screen at the scene, a suspect identified as Jamari Delavante is now recovering in the hospital. He is charged with having a dangerous weapon with the intent to harm and resisting arrest. The actions of the officer who opened fire are part of that investigation. Well, tonight, a Virginia man is behind bars after shooting a car that passed him on Fairfax uh, Highway in Fairfax County, according to police. Now, luckily, nobody was hurt. This is just the latest example of a dangerous trend of road rage. Our Northern Virginia reporter, Max Marcilla, joining us live along Route 28 in Centerville. And Max, we're seeing more and more instances of road rage. Chris, these charging documents we got our hands on today showed that Brian Fuentes Ruiz was allegedly mad that a car passed him on the roadway just behind us. So he pulled out a nine millimeter handgun and shot at the car. Nobody was inside, so nobody was injured, though the car was hit. But it's not the first time that we have seen or heard of an incident like this one. Saturday morning, just after 930 here near the intersection of Centerville Road and Compton Road, an allegedly angry driver mad he was passed open fire. Road rage, which is how Fairfax County Police described the shooting, is an unfortunate trend. We're asking for people to have continued patience. It's the same reason Prince William County Police warned drivers in February offering tips because two drivers got into an altercation. One pulled out a gun because of an incident on a roadway in Manassas. It's going to continue on because there's some people just don't have any patience. These incidents, no surprise to John McGill. It's a dog eat dog survival out here is what I'm born. you see it on a beltway zigzag zigzag and all this kind of stuff he says those behaviors got him injured while driving on route 50 in falls church last year and i was watching him as he parked his car i turned around to get into my car and wham, he came flying up behind me like a linebacker. I didn't notice it because I'm looking the other way. That road rage incident left him with a broken hip and bloody knee, among other bruises. And now he has a message for drivers. Realize just because you tailgate somebody, if there's cars in front of you, you're not going anywhere. Are you going to save five seconds of time? You know, it's, it's just stupid. Now, if that plea isn't enough to stick with you the next time you drive, think about this. Fuentes Ruiz, for his incident here, he is facing five felony charges, including a class three felony of malicious shooting. He is due back in court next, excuse me, in July is his next court appearance. Reporting in Centerville, Max Marcella, DC News Now. Well, a new study says Virginia ranks second in the nation for deadly crashes involving police chases. The study by H&P Law says that from 2017 to 2021, there were 82 deadly police chases in Virginia. That accounts for a little more than 2% of all crashes in the state. It is the second highest percentage out of all 50 states, trailing only Georgia. Well, a new bill in Prince George's County could take curfew for teens to a whole new level. DC News Now's Tiger Munn looks at the proposal. 
This morning, Prince George's County Council introduced a new bill that allowed business owners in areas like the National Harbor behind me and all across Prince George's County to request juvenile curfew zones. The act concerning juvenile and minor curfew zones would allow businesses to submit an application to the police chief to create a new zone. It would also need to be approved by the district's council member. Council member Edward Burroughs, who represents District 8, introduced the bill, and he says he knows that this legislation is not enough. Uh, at best, they are a band-aid to a much larger problem. Where the attention should be, in my opinion, is what the county government is doing to engage young people in a constructive way after school, on the weekends, and throughout the summer. Advocates in the community agree too. Sherman Hardy with Citizens for Accountability and Governance says that there needs to be a new approach. And they need to find another type of band-aid because this one isn't it. It's an overall issue of crime in itself. And when you have a, a whole community approach of solving that with proven methods and not band-aids, you know, that's when we'll start with real solution. The proposal will go to a committee hearing before going to a public meeting, and council members hope to get this implemented before summer vacation. Reporting in National Harbor, I'm Tiger Munn, DC News Now. All right, we now know the name of the fourth construction worker recovered in the Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore. His name, Carlos Daniel Hernandez. The Mexican consulate posted the news on X. The Unified Command announcing Monday that a fourth body was recovered from the wreckage. Two missing workers still remain unaccounted for tonight. And developing right now at 9, White's Ferry has a new chance to be operational once again after being closed for about four years. The owners say they've offered to donate the ferry's operation to Montgomery County. DC News Now's Tosin Fikile joining us live tonight in our newsroom with that update. And Tosin, Montgomery County officials now weighing in on this offer. That's right, Chris, they are. And the sentiment is it is welcome news. At least that's what we get from a statement from Montgomery County Executive Mark Elrich. Now, this move comes after White's Ferry owner says they've made moves to work with Virginia landowners Rockland Farm, and those efforts have gone not gone anywhere. Now, as we know, the historic ferry spans the Potomac River and provided crossing from Montgomery County, Maryland to Loudoun County, Virginia for over 200 years. Now, it closed in December 2020. So let's give you some back story of what led to today's announcement to White Ferry's owners say they made offers to Rockland Farm landowners on the Virginia side, including offering to buy an easement to access the Virginia landing. But they say Rockland Farm rejected that offer. Now the ferry owners say the offer to Montgomery County is a chance to preserve history and save jobs. Now in a statement, Mark Elridge says while the offer to donate the ferry is a major step forward, we need to continue efforts to restore public use of the ferry landing in in Virginia. Without public access to the Virginia landing, our efforts to restore service remain stalled. Now, Elridge says today Montgomery County's Department of Transportation met with represent representatives of the ferry's owner to discuss the nature and the timing of this donation. Now, both sides stressing the economic impact of getting this ferry operational in a 2021 study from Montgomery County's Department of Transportation. They said the economic impact is about $9 million. So white ferry owners say the donation would require Require Montgomery County and uh, Loudoun County work together to gain access to Virginia shoreline and get this open in a timely manner. Back to you. All right, Tosin Fikile live in the newsroom. Thanks for the update, Tosin. It is Emancipation Day here in the district. The holiday commemorates the 1862 act that ended slavery in Washington and freed more than 3,000 people. Well, several gathered at Lincoln Park on Capitol Hill to recognize the day, some calling for the removal of so-called slavery loophole in the Constitution. Language in the 13th Amendment makes an exception for people convicted of crimes. If slavery is allowed in the Constitution, then we've got to change the Constitution. Convict leasing system where now the individual didn't own you, but the state did. And you may not be born a slave or die a slave, but you will certainly spend some time as a slave in a system of convict leasing. Well, Emancipation Day was officially recognized as a holiday in 2004. Well, step aside, Zion, Yosemite, Shenandoah National Park is ranked as the number one national park in the entire country for the second year in a row. Travel Lemming, an online travel guide, ranks Virginia's only national park number one out of 63 parks. Pretty impressive. The data also ranks Shenandoah sixth for biodiversity and seventh in accessibility.